welcome to another episode of Dinner Starts Here. Uh, we are in Perth County with Fred today at Perth Pork. Thanks for having me, Fred. No problem, my pleasure. Um, so the picture behind you kind of gives away a little bit what kind of a farm you are. Perth Pork obviously does as well. Uh, um, yeah. But maybe you can start right from the beginning. What kind of farmer are you, Fred? I'm a pig farmer in Perth County. You're a pig farmer. How long have you been a pig farmer? I've been a pig farmer since 1979, so that adds up to be 38 years. 38 years? Yeah, I started when I was really young. Oh yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously is what we're thinking. Just, just right out of daycare, so. <laughs> um, now Fred, I mean earlier in the year we went to a different pig farm. Yours is, yours is a little bit more unique. Um, in the fact that you've got a few unique breeds of pigs to go along with it, and then we'll talk about your customers and that different, but maybe we'll start with the pigs themselves. What kind of pigs uh, do you have around the farm? We have wild boar, we have Berkshire pigs, Tamworth, regular commodity pigs, and then we crossbreed them too. So we take our Tams and wild boar, that turns into a an Iron Age, and we have our Berkshire and Wild Boar, and we call them our Stone Age, um, all just to please our chef customers because they always like to see something different on the menu. Mm -hmm. Now, those ones, as you name those breeds, they're known as like heritage breeds, yes. aren't they? Um, so then, what's so special about a heritage breed versus, as you said, like the commodity pig, kind of the more common one you find in Ontario? What's the difference? The big difference between the, the heritage uh, and commodity pigs is the fact that the heritage breeds are fatty. Mm -hmm. Very well marbled, thick back fat, and, and, a, and a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't go over too well with uh, the regular uh, supermarket stores because they like to see lean, lean, lean. It's just that, and I keep telling people, this is, you want something that tastes good. Don't, don't eat a lot of it. But whatever you eat, it has to taste good. And marbling really makes a pork chop taste good. Okay. And if you cook it correctly, low and slow, most of that fat is gone by the time it hits the plate anyway. But the flavor is still there. Because the way it works is the meat juices disappear and they have all the flavor. But if you've got lots of fat in there, then the fat will go first, then the meat juices. And by the time your fat's gone, the meat is cooked. It still needs to be yeah. cooked. And that's the secret behind it all. Yeah. So don't be afraid of it, but in hand and just embrace it. Yeah. It's, it makes you know its differences and take advantage of them. Yeah. 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 So then, I mean, you know, when you started getting into the heritage breeds and doing that, I mean, why do that? Why not stick with kind of a pig that is the commodity pig? Why go to the heritage breed? Long story. I'll make it short for you. Um, we started in 1979. I wanted to put together my own pig, so I, I literally closed the barn doors and bought in semen through uh, Ontario uh, uh, Swine AI and just used uh, semen to build a pig. And that took a few years and we got that done. We had a good carcass, uh, top quality. And at that point, the only thing that I could do is raise more. And that wasn't the challenge that I was looking for. I wanted something different. And what really caught my eye was the wild boar at the time. It was an article in the Rural Voice. And uh, he was reading that and I thought, wow, it looks to me as there is absolutely no marketing in place for, these wild, for that wild boar meat because they're only being raised at that time for the hunt. So I thought, well, that would be something that I would like to get into and create a market, a true market for wild boar meat. And that's what got me rolling into the marketing end of things. And when we had a market set up for wild boar, the Burks and the Tams come around the corner and they needed that too. And so we rolled with it. And so that's how we came to, uh, to kind of full circle with all these breeds. So then where do you sell these things? Where do you sell the meat? Most of our meat is being sold in downtown Toronto in and around the CN Tower, that's where most of our customers are. Uh, a lot of it goes to uh, Ottawa and some to Niagara Falls and, and Windsor. Mm -hmm. um, like restaurants, grocery stores, like what, what kind of places? It's, it's, a, it's a, uh, a nice mix between restaurants and butcher shops, but the smaller butcher shops. 
So not your, your grocery stores, your big grocery stores like uh, a Loblaws or a Sobeys, they're, they're way out of my league. But the small butcher shops in the big cities, like in Toronto, you've got lots of individually owned butcher shops and those are the ones that, uh, that are selling our pork. Cool. So then, um, you know, the other, the other part of it is kind of the story that goes along with raising the pig. So here at this barn where your son lives uh, is where the piglets are born. Um, yeah. From there, what happens to the pigs? How, how do you raise them? We raise them, it takes us a lot longer. If, if a regular market hog would take five months from birth to reach market weight, ours will take seven months. And every pig farmer out there will tell you that that's, in, that's crazy because your cost of production is going to be so high that you're not going to be able to, to make any money. But because we do our own marketing, we set our own price, and we have a customer base that is willing, that likes the quality that we, that we sell them, and they're willing to pay the price that we need for it and understand that it's not the cheapest pork out there. And so that's what makes our business uh, profitable. Um, then what, what do your pigs eat? Is it different from other pigs in Ontario? Or what, what's their diet like? Their diet is, is the regular diet for most uh, pigs in, in Ontario is corn soybean meal. Uh, ours do get some corn because you need the energy that you get from corn, but they, they get m much more of the other grains that are available. Okay. And it's, it's a mix that I've put together myself with uh, um, a feed specialist, because uh, I had to convince them that I didn't want these pigs to grow real fast. It was all about carcass quality. Yeah. That marbling. That know. marbling that has to be in the, in the loins and, and in the shoulders. And, and that's what gives it flavor, and that's what I'm what I'm going for. Cool. So you know, unique in terms of feeding, obviously a unique marketing strategy, and going to restaurants and that. The other piece to that is actually the room we're in here um, is your viewing room where people can come and you give yep. tours and stuff like that. Um, what kind of people come to the farm? Is it just anybody can come and see? Anybody out there can come, um, but you got to call us first. Um, Call us, uh, check our website, there's phone numbers on there at Perth Park, and, and give us a call, set it up, and then we'd be more than happy to give you a, a farm tour. Individual families, it's all free, uh, only uh, bigger businesses, uh, we, we charge a minimum charge. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's, it's free for everybody. And the reason that we're doing that is because we want to educate people on what really happens on a pig farm in Ontario. Why? Why do but you want to do that? There is so much bad press out there that is just looking to find something that's exciting, that will sell airtime, that will sell magazines, but they're not necessarily telling you the truth. And everybody figures that whatever ends up in the newspaper is the truth, and unfortunately it's not. But if you come to our farm, you can ask your questions directly to me. We'll walk around, it takes about an hour and a half, so it's not a quick in and out. You get a good chance to ask your questions and to see the animals, and then you'll find out what really happens on, on Ontario pig farms. What's your experience been like doing that? Because you've been doing that for quite a while. Um, you know, what, are, what are some of the conversations like? What is, what's it been like for you? It's been, it's been a very exciting for us, because we get to meet everybody out there. At the end of the tour, I tend to ask you what you do for a living, since you know now what I do for a living. And that's when I find out what kind of people I've been entertaining for the last uh, hour and a half. And, and it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's extremely exciting. Any, anybody, anybody, anybody out in society, from, from government offices uh, to wherever, uh, they all are interested in food. And a lot of people, more and more people, are interested in trying to find out where their food is actually coming from. Cool. Well, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to give us a tour as well. Thanks for the day today, Fred. No problem.